everybody, I'm Kat, and welcome to the pole dancing section here at Movadu. Since there are so many different associations and each one has got its own syllabus, we've decided to take what we like and create our own syllabus at Dansation. So let us show you how to dance our way. But remember, safety first. So be sure that your pole is secure very safely, nice and tightly to the ceiling if you use a pole that needs to be connected to the ceiling and the floor. Or make sure that the pole is connected securely to your stage if you're using a portable pole and have fun dancing safely. Let us introduce you to your pole. Now, if you've got a solid pole that needs to connect to the ceiling and the floor, be sure that it's connected properly and securely. You can even take the pole and shake it a little bit. Now, if the pole is connected to the ceiling and the floor, it shouldn't be able to do this. This pole is on a portable stage, so this pole will shake a little bit. But a solid pole shouldn't be able to shake. That pole should be solid. Now, take your strong arm. In my case, it's my right arm. Hold on to the pole and just let's walk around the pole. You can even lean away from the pole a little bit to make sure you're not falling over. And for the fun of it, take your weak arm as well and walk around the pole. Try to keep your feet close to the pole and lean away with your upper body so that you can feel that you can actually trust the pole. Jewelry tip. You guys, you cannot wear any jewelry while you're doing pole dancing. You're going to scratch your pole. So take off the blinky stuff and enjoy the dancing. Now, at the moment, my pole is on static. This means the pole cannot turn around. You do get a spinning section for most of the poles. If you're planning to dance on a static pole, be sure that it cannot go over to the spinning section. So be sure that it's properly secured in its static position. And also remember, as you dance, the oil from your skin will go onto the pole. The pole can get dirty. So be sure to clean the pole if you feel it becomes slippery, do not fall. How to clean your pole. Okay guys, your pole is going to get dirty and it might get slippery and you don't wanna fall while spinning. Now personally, I like to use an alcohol-based disinfectant that you get from high tech. Uh, usually the physiotherapists use it to clean their tables and equipment. Now, don't go and spray on the pole because the drops is gonna pass the pole, fall on the floor and make, might make the floor sticky. So spray it on a towel or a cloth and then simply clean the pole with the towel. Make sure it's nice and clean from the top to the bottom and be sure to wait for it to dry before you start spinning. Otherwise, you can simply take a towel, wet one of the corners, and use plain water to clean the pole. Again, you wanna make sure that the pole is dry before you start spinning. So if you've used water, simply dry it off afterwards. Alternatively, you can also use dishwashing liquid. It will also clean the pole. Find a product that works for you and keep your pole clean. And then last but not least, for the moves we're going to do first in this section, the beginner moves, what I'm wearing now is perfectly fine. Anything comfortable, but remember, when you get to the more advanced sections, you will want to have more skin on your legs exposed and later on, even skin exposed on your tummy in order to do the more advanced moves. So get your pole, get your music, and let's start dancing. Let's quickly go over to your position in relation with the pole. I'm gonna stand with my back towards you so that it's easier to follow. Now I will be on the left of the pole or also next to the pole. This is in front of the pole. Next to the pole or to the right of the pole. And now I'm behind the pole. Be sure to know your spacing in relation to the pole in order to avoid confusion and even injuries. Okay, you guys, so spinning around the pole is a lot of fun and you're probably gonna do it a lot. But because of that, it's really important that you always put safety first. Because if you do the spins and you don't think and concentrate about the safety tips that needs to be done, then you will hurt yourself. So let's just quickly go over a few of these safety tips that you need to focus on while spinning. Firstly, 
doesn't matter what grip you have, whether it be the basic, uh, the baseball grip or the basic grip, or the stronghold or the half bracket grip, it doesn't matter. Before you pick your feet off of the floor, you need to be 100% sure that you actually do have grip on the pole. Because if you just take a hold of the pole and pick up those feet without thinking, you will slide down to the floor instantly. And you will, will hurt your knees or your feet, or depending on what hits the floor first, that will hurt. So always double check that you do have grip by simply holding on and getting the feeling almost as if you want to pull yourself up. And obviously, if you feel that you can go up, you've got good grip. But the moment you try to pull up and you feel you ain't going nowhere and your arms are coming down, then you do not have a good grip. So test whether or not it helps to put a little bit of water on your hands and on the pole and dry it off, or um, an alcohol-based cleaner. Depending on what works for you, use that to make sure that you've got grip on the pole before you start spinning, especially in the winter, because for some weird and wacky reason, in the winter when it's cold, you're not gonna have grip on the pole. So do not just walk in, take the pole and spin. You might crash. Be sure to have grip. Now the next thing is your shoulder blades, also known as your scapula. I'm going to turn with my back to you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. People have a tendency to think when they need to hold on high, they need to hold on high. Can you see what I'm doing with my shoulder? I'm reaching up out of my shoulder, out of the socket to get the hand as high as I possibly can. Now, when you do this, you've got zero stabilization in your shoulder blades. And basically, you're hanging on your ligaments and your tendons, which is not good for you. So always be sure that when you stand getting ready for pole dancing, that you want to take the shoulder blades here at the back and pull the shoulders back and down as you activate the shoulder blades. So think of getting a nice good gap between your ears and your shoulders and then think of pulling the shoulder blades to the back and down and squeezing the muscles in order to hold it there. So once you've got your shoulder blades activated, you can now take that arm up without reaching out of the shoulder. You can see, clearly see the difference between an activated shoulder blade and a non-activated shoulder blade. And this counts for right-handed people as well as left-handed people. Always be sure to activate your scapula or your shoulder blades before you do the spins, especially that moment when you pick your feet off the floor, you need to be sure that your shoulders can hold you just as good as your hand grip is holding you as well. And then last but not least, your tummy muscles. When you spin around the pole, you always need to be sure that you're activating your entire core all, or all of your tummy muscles along with your glutes and the bum. You want to squeeze the bum muscles or the glute muscles in order, in order to stabilize the pelvic region. And squeezing the tummy muscles will not only give you a strong core as you progress while dancing, it will help you to control the momentum you have when you spin around a static pole. Now, for level one, we're going to spin only on static poles. So activating that core in level one is crucial. But before we go into the spins, let's just break down what it exactly means to squeeze your tummy muscles. Now, I'm gonna turn to the side so that you can see why I'm saying what I'm about to say. If you stand up straight and now you've pulled back and down with the shoulder blades and you've activated the shoulder blades, now I'm telling you to squeeze your tummy. Be careful. When you think of squeezing your tummy, do not think of squeezing the tummy. Never shorten when you squeeze. Lengthen when you squeeze. So, don't think of contracting the tummy muscles towards each other and bringing your upper body down to your lower body when you squeeze the tummy muscles. Think of a zip up. Think of taking your tummy muscles and squeezing them towards each other from the sides and then up. It should almost feel as if you're growing taller the moment you squeeze your tummy muscles and not shorter. You can even practice this in front of the mirror to be sure that you keep your posture up straight while activating those tummy muscles. 